features of the three compartments of thigh. The thigh is a region that lies between hip and knee joint. Muscles of the anterior compartment of thigh mainly extend leg at knee joint. Muscles of posterior compartment of thigh mainly extend thigh at hip joint and flex knee uh, flex leg at the knee joint. Muscles of medial compartment of thigh mainly adduct thigh at hip joint. So medial compartment is adductor of hip joint. A posterior compartment extend thigh and it is extensor of hip, uh, hip joint and flexor of knee joint. Whereas the anterior compartment is extensor at the knee joint. Learning objectives at the end of this lesson, students should be able to discuss arrangement of the thigh into compartments. Explain muscle of the medial compartment of thigh and the respective actions. Describe innovation and blood supply of muscles of medial compartment of thigh. Discuss clinical conditions associated with the medial compartment of thigh. But remember, we will not discuss blood supply and clinical anatomy in today's class. That will be the separate class. Arrangement of thigh into compartments. As we can see, this is the skin. This is skin. This is the superficial fascia. And this light gray color, this is the deep fascia. This is the investing layer of deep fascia which covers the muscles of the thigh. So this is the covering all around the muscles of thigh and it extends inside the muscular region like this. So these extensions of the deep fascia, this is covering all around and this is the extension within the muscular region. So these extensions are called as an intermuscular septum. So there are three intermuscular septums within the thigh which divides the thigh into three compartments. This is the anterior compartment, this is medial compartment and this is posterior compartment. Now intermuscular septum, this is the medial intermuscular septum. This is lateral intramuscular septum and this is the posterior intramuscular septum. Medial, this is medial, this is lateral and this is posterior intramuscular septum. So these intramuscular septums divide the thigh into three compartments, anterior, medial and posterior compartments. This is femur. Now you can see in this uh, diagram, uh, the most superficial one is the skin and then we have superficial fascia and light purple is the deep fascia, investing layer of the deep fascia which extends inside the thigh and divides into the compartments. This is the medial intermuscular septum and this is the posterior intermuscular septum and this is the lateral intermuscular septum. So lateral, medial and posterior intermuscular septum divides the thigh compartment, thigh into three compartments. The anterior compartment, the muscles of the anterior compartment which is highlighted in purple are also called as a quadriceps muscle. The muscles which are highlighted in blue, these are the posterior compartment muscle. These muscles are also called as a hamstrings muscle whereas the muscles highlighted in green is the medial compartment. These are the adductor muscles. Muscles of the medial compartment of thigh and their actions. There are six muscles. Some books say uh, there are five. Some books say there are six but we will discuss six muscles. Gracilis, adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, pectineus, obturator externus. Now this muscle which is uh, on the left side, this is the adductor longus muscle. Oh, gracilis, sorry. This is the gracilis muscle, this one on the right side. This. And then we have adductor longus muscle. This is the on the left side, uh, left leg. This is the adductor 
longus muscle and this is adductor brevis muscle and then we have adductor magnus muscle which is starting from here behind the adductor longus and adductor brevis behind these two muscles this is the superior border of this muscle and here is the inferior border of this muscle let me change highlighter this is the inferior border of this muscle this one and this is the superior border so this is the adductor magnus muscle starting from here then it, be, it goes behind the adductor longus and brevis and then extend up to the lower end of the femur so this hole is the adductor magnus that is why it is uh, name is adductor magnus it's a very huge muscle or you can say this is a very uh, large muscle and then we have a pectineus picture on the left side this is the pectineus this muscle this is the pectineus muscle and then obturator externus again you can see this is the obturator externus on the left side going towards the greater rocking of thigh or femur so we have uh, six muscles each and every muscle we will discuss in detail so you don't need to worry okay we are not understanding we are not supposed to understand in this uh, just in this one diagram medial compartment of thigh also called as a adductor compartment so adductor compartment or medial compartment is the same thing collectively all these muscles which we have di discussed in a previous slide six muscles except the obturator externus the obturator externus does not ex uh, adduct the thigh so except the obturator externus all muscle mainly adduct the thigh at hip joint so they are adductor at hip joint so adductor magnus adductor longus and adductor magnus may also medially rotate thigh adductor longus plus adductor magnus they both can also medially rotate thigh obturator externus is a lateral rotator of thigh at hip joint so obturator externus is not adductor muscle but it is a lateral rotator of thigh even it uh, abduct the thigh this action is quite opposite to the adductor compartment gracilis muscle is the most superficial muscle in the medial compartment of thigh as you can see picture on the right side the highlighted in the green is the gracilis muscle the gracilis muscle is more superficial this is the gracilis muscle most superficial muscle of the medial compartment of the descend almost vertically down uh, to the thigh so this is again picture on the left side this highlighted in red color this is the gracilis muscle most superficial muscle of the compartment and descends vertically down to the middle side of the thigh gracilis uh, origin it arises from the medial margin of the external surface of the body of the pubis now this is the medial margin of the uh, external surface of the body of the pubis this is the uh, body of the pubis this external surface and this is the uh, medial margin this is the medial margin and this is the lateral margin so it arises from the medial margin of the uh, medial margin on the external surface this is the external surface and behind will be internal surface or you can say this is the anterior surface and behind is the posterior surface and this is the medial margin this side and this is the lateral margin and this hole is the body and this is the superior ramus this is the inferior ramus so and this one is the pectineal line oh, oh sorry yeah pectineal line and this is the pubic crest this this is pubic tubercle right and this is the inferior ramus this pu inferior pubic ramus this is the ischial ramus and this is the 
superior pubic ramus, this one, and this is the pectineal surface, this region. Now, uh, let me tell you again. So, gracilis is taking origin from the medial, uh, medial margin on the external surface. So, this is the medial margin and this is the external surface. This is the medial margin of the external surface coming down to the inferior pubic ramus uh, at the margin of the inferior pubic ramus and then ramus of the stem, adjoining ramus of the stem. So, this outline shows the origin of the gracilis muscle. Gracilis muscle inserts medial surface of the proximal shaft of the tibia. Now you can see this is the proximal part of the tibia. Now this is the medial surface. Now gracilis inserts, this is the insertion point of the gracilis at the center and anterior to the gracilis is the insertion of the sartorius muscle, posterior to the uh, gracilis is the insertion of the semitendinosus or you can say this muscle uh, gracilis is inserts in between the sartorius and uh, semitendinosus muscle so at the insertion point this muscle is sandwiched in between sartorius and gracilis or uh, sartorius and semitendinosus muscle now you can see picture above this is the sartorius muscle and this is the semi tendinosus muscle in the center this one is the this central muscle is the gracilis muscle now just focus at the lower end now you can see this is the tibia and this is the sartorius this is the gracilis in between these two is the central muscle is the gracilis muscle. So, in this way you can say the insertion point of the gracilis muscle is sandwiched in between the sartorius and uh, gracilis muscle. Gracilis innovation is operator nerve L2 and L3. Action of the gracilis muscle is adducts thigh at hip joint and flexes leg at the knee joint. As you can see picture above and uh, this is the adduction which is not the function of adductor compartment this one but this is the uh, this is abduction so abduction is not the function of adductor compartment so it adducts the thigh at hip joint this is the correct one and it also flexes knee uh, leg at the knee joint as you can see picture below is the flexion of the leg at the knee joints the so, function of the gracilis is adduct thigh at hip joint and flexes knee flexes leg at the knee joint. Pectineous muscle. The pectineous muscle is a quadrangular muscle. As you can see, this is the pectineous muscle. Quadrangular muscle descends laterally. As you can see, it is going towards the lateral side. Passes into the thigh below the inguinal ligament. Inguinal ligament will be sort of here in the this sort and just uh, passing behind the inguinal ligament forms the part of floor of medial half of the femoral triangle the picture below you can see highlighted in a dark dotted line is the femoral triangle and this is the pectineous muscle this one so this is forming the part of the floor of the medial half of the femoral triangle now this is all is the floor of the femoral triangle and this is this this side is the medial half this one is the medial half and this one is the lateral half so medial half not completely medial half, but part of the medial half so this is the pectineous muscle and down is the adductor longus muscle so partly formed by the adductor longus medial half and partly formed by the pectineous uh, pectineous muscle Pectineous muscle origin, pectineal line and adjoining bone of the pubis. Now, as you can see uh, in this diagram above, this is the uh, pectineal line, this one, posteriorly. 
can you see the picture above this is the pectineal line and this is the pubic crest inferiorly this one and this surface is the pectineal surface right and this is the pubic tubercle and this is the anterior surface of the body and this is the posterior surface in the picture below posterior surface of the body now this is the iliopectineal line partly formed by the ilium and this is the pectineal line this one picture below this one is the pectineal line and anteriorly will be this the pubic crest in the picture above this is the pubic crest and this is the pectineal line this is the uh, pectineal surface so pectineal line origin is the pectineal line see in the picture below this is the pectineal line it's originating from the pectineal line and adjacent part of the uh, uh, adjacent bone of the pelvis adjacent bone is the upper half of the pectineal surface actually this is the upper half of the pectineal surface so this is the origin of the pectineus this all the so upper half of the pectineal surface plus pectineal line is the origin of the pectineus muscle pectineus muscle inserts on oblique line on the posterior aspect of the proximal part of the femur as you can see uh, oblique line start from the lesser trochanter base of the lesser trochanter this is the base this is a greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter from start from the base of the lesser trochanter to the linea aspera now from here the linea aspera will start so in between the linea aspera and base of the lesser trochanter this is the oblique line and this is the posterior aspect of the femur so oblique line extend from the base of the lesser trochanter to the lina aspera on the posterior surface of the proximal femur this is the insertion point and you can see the picture above this is the lesser trochanter this is greater trochanter and this is the base of the lesser trochanter till the uh, lina aspera this is the oblique line so uh, pectineus inserts on the pec uh, oblique line on the posterior aspects of the proximal end of the femur innervation of the pectineus is the femoral nerve l2 and l3 pectineus action adducts and flexes thigh at hip joint now as you can see this is the adduction this one adduction so this is the adductor of the hip and this is the abduction so it is not the abductor of hip plus flexion at the hip joint this is the flexion of the hip joint so pectineus is the adductor and flexor at the hip joint adductor longus is a fan shaped muscle expand as it descends now you can see this is the apex and this sort of base and is expand downward when it descends it's a sort of fan shape its medial margin forms the medial border of the femoral triangle is highlighted in a red dotted line picture below is the femoral triangle and this muscle is the pectineus muscle and this one is the adductor longus muscle so adductor longus muscle uh, forms its medial margin now this is the point to understand let me change color yes now this is the medial margin of the adductor longus muscle and this is the lateral margin of the adductor longus muscle so medial margin forms the medial border of the femoral triangle now femoral triangle has the three uh, borders this is the uh, medial border this is a uh, medial border this one and this is the and other border superior and this is the lateral border so medial border is formed by the medial margin of the adductor longus muscles look at the picture above this is the medial border 
it is a fan shaped muscle expand when it descend down it forms the medial margin of the its medial margin forms the medial border of the femoral triangle so femoral triangle's boundary is formed by the medial margin of the adductor long adductor longus muscle contribute to the floor of the femoral triangle as we already discussed the floor of the femoral triangle the picture on the left side this is the uh, lateral half of the floor of the femoral triangle this is the medial half of the floor of the femoral triangle partly uh, floor is formed by the pectineus muscle above this one let me change highlighter once more yes so this is the pectineus muscle and this is the adductor longus muscle the uh, medial half of the floor of the femoral triangle is partly formed by the pectineus muscle and partly formed by the adductor longus muscle now adductor longus muscle also forms the proximal posterior wall of the adductor canal now picture on the right side you can see this is sort of passage in the between the muscles so from which the femoral vessels femoral vein and femoral artery they will pass through the femoral triangle and leave the femoral triangle through this adductor canal so adductor canal is sort of apex of the femoral triangle you can see picture on the uh, left side so it's sort of passage at the apex of the femoral uh, triangle inferiorly in between muscles so this uh, adductor longus muscle form the proximal posterior wall of the adductor longus muscle definitely this posterior part is the posterior wall this one and this will be the anterior wall below anteriorly and this is the passage so posterior wall is formed by proximal part of the posterior wall because this adductor longus muscle will insert onto the femur at the middle and below this femoral canal floor of this uh, femoral canal or posterior wall of this femoral canal is formed by the uh, adductor magnus muscle we will discuss in a while so this adductor canal which contains femoral vessels so these are the femoral vessels which are coming passing throughout the femoral triangle and leave the femoral uh, triangle through the femoral canal adductor longus muscle origin external surface of the body of the pubis a triangular depression inferior to the pubic crest and lateral uh, lateral to the pubic symphysis now as you can uh, see this is the uh, pubic uh, symphysis this is the pubic symphysis and this is the uh pubic crest this one so inferior to the pubic crest and uh lateral to the medial or uh, pubic symphysis this is the pubic symphysis this sort of the lateral to the pubic symphysis inferior to the pubic crest so this surface which is uh the uh, present on the external surface uh, external part of the body of the pubis and this surface gives origin to the adductor longus muscle now you can see this region is the origin point these are dots these dots are the origin point of the adductor longus muscle now this i will repeat this is the origin of gracilis muscle this one and this is the adductor longus muscle and this is the a uh, pectineal line posteriorly is the pectineus muscle and even the uh, medial half of the pectineal line so this is the pectineus muscle and here is the gracilis muscle this one is the gracilis and this is the adductor longus muscle so adductor longus muscle arises from the external surface of the body of the pubis a triangular depression inferior to the pubic uh, crest and lateral to the pubic symphysis so this is the picture on the left side you can see this is the origin of the adductor longus 
Obturator nerve is the innervation of the adductor longus muscle, the anterior division L2, 3 and 4. Adductor longus insertion. It inserts on linea aspera on the middle one-third of the shaft of the femur. Now, this is the middle one-third of the shaft of the femur and this is the linea aspera. So, this middle one-third is the insertion point for the adductor longus muscle. Now, you can see muscle on the left side. This is the origin point and this is the middle one-third of the shaft posteriorly at the linea aspera. Now, actions of the adductor longus muscle. The adductor longus muscle adducts and medially rotates thigh at hip joint. As you can see picture on the right side is the medial rotation and lateral rotation. The medial rotation is the action of the adductor longus but not the lateral rotation. Similarly, picture on the left side you can see there is the abduction and adduction. So, adduction is the function of adductor compartment not the abduction. So, functions of the adductor longus are adducts and medially rotates thigh at hip joint. Adductor brevis is the name indicates it adducts but comparatively shorter is the adductor longus or magnus. Adductor brevis lie posterior to the pectineus and adductor longus muscle. They all are in the same position and the compartment but slightly uh, the adductor longus is and pectineus are more anterior than the uh, adductor or uh, the adductor brevis. As you can see, this is the pectineus and this is the adductor brevis. And in picture on the left side, this is the adductor longus. Now, this muscle is sort of more anterior and pectineus is even more anterior. And adductor brevis will be sort of posteriorly. So, it partly overlap in between pectineus and adductor longus muscle. So, these three muscles are overlapping the muscle that is the adductor magnus muscle behind adductor part. Now, lies posterior to the pectineus and adductor longus muscle. It is a triangular muscle attached to at its apex on the body of the pubis as you can see picture on the left side, right side and inferior pubic ramus. We will discuss its origin in detail and just posterior to the origin of the gracilis muscle it originates. I will show you in the next slide. Adductor brevis origin the external surface of the body of the pubis. Now this is the external surface of the body of the pubis inferior pubic ramus. Now adductor brevis actually uh, originates in between this medially most medial this one is the towards the obturator foramen is the origin of the obturator externus muscle this one and laterally uh, outward this one is the gracilis muscle and in between these two the central one is the uh, adductor brevis muscle so adductor brevis muscle arises external surface of the body of the pubis this is the body of the pubis external surface and inferior pubic ramus this is the inferior pubic ramus and it will not go up to the uh, like uh, still ramus it's only uh, external surface of the body of the pubis and inferior pubic ramus in between obturator externus and gracilis muscle insertion it inserts posterior surface of the proximal femur and upper one third of the linea aspera. Now, adductor brevis, posterior surface of the proximal femur. This is the posterior surface of the proximal femur and upper one third of the linea aspera. Now, this is the linea aspera, upper one third of the linea aspera. So, this is right here is the origin of the insertion of the adductor brevis in between these two lines. Adductor brevis innervation, obturator nerve L1 and L2 to L3. Adductor brevis action adducts thigh at hip joint. So again, this is the correct one. Adduction, this is the wrong, not abduction. So remember the 
this is the adductor compartment so it always adduct the thigh at hip joint except one muscle that we will discuss and I adductor magnus muscle is the largest muscle of the compartment it is two parts adductor part and hamstring part or you can say the medial part and lateral part the medial part the picture on the left side is highlighted in a uh, purple and red is the adductor magnus muscle adductor magnus muscle has two parts one is in the purple color and other is in the red color the medial one uh, is the purple and the lateral one is the uh, sorry medial one is the uh, hamstring part that is the red one and the lateral one is the purple part that is the adductor part now we can see in this uh, this is the posterior view and this all is the adductor part and this is the hamstring part or you can say this is the medial part which is called as a hamstring part this is the lateral part which is called as a adductor part this is the anterior view picture on the right side this highlighted in green this is the adductor part and behind this inferiorly you can see this is the uh, hamstring part which is uh, mostly visible from the posterior view as you can see on picture on the left side so highlighted in a uh, red color so this is the uh, hamstring part now the the adductor part is overlap by three muscles starting from above is the pectineus muscle first here will be the pectineus muscle this and then it has a adductor uh, brevis muscle over here and then inferiorly it will be adductor longus muscle so these three muscles overlap the upper part of the uh, adductor part of the adductor magnus muscle and uh, inferiorly you can see this is the hamstring part and posteriorly the hamstring part is most uh, more visible because uh, adductor part is the part of the medial compartment of thigh whereas the hamstring part is the part of the posterior compartment of thigh so they are quite different in their actions the adductor part will act as the adductor compartment muscles of the adductor compartment whereas the uh, hamstring part will be quite opposite to the adductor part now adductor magnus adductor part now in this picture you can see this behind muscle this one posteriorly to the adductor part this one is the hamstring part so hamstring part is towards more medial side and this adductor part is the lateral part the large circular gap inferiorly between hamstring and adductor part this is the large gap inferiorly you can see this is the large gap this one inferiorly you can see this is the large gap in between the adductor part and uh, hamstring part this side will be the hamstring part most medial and lateral will be the adductor part in between two at the inferior end there is a partition or there is a circular gap that is called as a adductor hiatus what is that adductor hiatus the adductor hiatus is nothing but just the partition in between or gap in between the adductor part and hamstring part inferiorly at the inferior end of the femur through which, which allows the femoral artery and associated vein to pass uh, to the popliteal fossa posterior to the knee so from here the femoral vessels like you can see in this picture uh, in this picture this is the femoral vessels femoral uh, picture uh, the on the right side right the smaller one this is the artery and this is the vein so these both are the vessels which are passing in front of the adductor magnus muscle through the uh, this uh, adductor canal and then they will come out at the bottom or inferior end and then from this opening they will go posteriorly behind the knee and enter into the posterior compartment of leg 
now adductor part origin ischiopubic ramus now it is the adductor part is originating from the ischiopubic ramus this is the origin of the adductor part of the adductor magnus muscle this one now this is the posterior lateral of the body of the pubis and this is the body uh, is still is still is still uh, is still ramus and this is the part uh, adjoining part of the pubic ramus so is still pubic ramus this is the origin point of the adductor uh, magnus uh, muscle uh, of the adductor part this is the pubic uh, uh, still tuberosity this one and this is the pubic tubercle this is the anterior one insertion of the adductor part of the adductor magnus it has a three points of insertion the posterior surface of the proximal femur you can see picture above this is the proximal surface of the posterior surface uh, proximal uh, femur uh, posterior surface of the proximal femur and then linea aspera picture below that this all the length with the Uh, going along with the linea aspera so it inserts on the linea aspera and then medial supracondylar line this is the lateral supracondylar line and this is the medial supracondylar line so that it inserts on the medial supracondylar line starting from above posterior surface of the proximal femur this and then linea aspera all the length and then uh, medial supracondylar line these are the three point of insertions where the adductor part of the uh, adductor magnus muscle inserts innervation is obturator nerve l2 3 and 4 action of the adductor part is adducts and medially rotates thigh at hip joint so same it uh, medially rotates this is the medial rotation of the thigh this is the lateral rotation of thigh so this is not the lateral rotator this is medial rotator of thigh so this is the medial rotation and adduction this is abduction so abduction is not the action of adductor compartment so this is the adduction except one muscle we will discuss later hamstring part now adductor make this hamstring part the hamstring part is this part this posterior part this is the inferior end and this is the superior now origin is still tuberosity now this is the still tuberosity this is the origin of the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle just inferior to that is the uh, adductor uh, long uh, adductor part of the adductor magnus here and this is the gracilis muscle origin this is adductor brevis muscle this is obturator externus and here is the adductor longus muscle and superiorly uh, on the pectineal line will be the pectineus muscle hamstring part insertion it inserts on the adductor tubercle and supracondylar line as you can see picture on the right side the purple is the adductor part and the red is the hamstring part so hamstring part is the part of posterior compartment and adductor part is the part of the in uh, medial compartment so uh, the um, hamstring part which inserts on this uh, adductor tubercle as you can see the blue in color this is the adductor tubercle this uh, this one it gets inserts on the adductor, adductor tubercle and superior to that is the medial supracondylar line so it inserts on the medial supracondylar line as well as the adductor tubercle now adductor magnus hamstring part innervation the sciatic nerve tibial division this is the sciatic nerve this uh, yellow the largest when a nerve it has a two parts it's composed of two parts the uh, one is highlight you can see below this highlighted in green is the fib uh, fibular part or peroneal part this is also called as a fibular or peroneal part the medial one is the 
tibial part they are this uh, uh, nerve is bifurcating at this level but even in its superior course it has a two parts they are united together but they bifurcate at the lower end just above the popliteal fossa but in above course they both are united but the fibers which are innovating the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle are from the tibial division of sciatic nerve so it innovates the uh hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle now we have uh action of the adductor uh, magnus muscle so extension at hip joint extension at hip joint flexion of knee so this is not the adductor part so you can see this is the extension at the hip joint this is this uh, thigh is flexed but this thigh is uh, extended so extension at hip joint and flexion at knee joint so both actions are visible in this picture these are the action of adductor a hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle obturator externus muscle the obturator externus originate uh, this is a, the muscle uh, origin is the external surface of, uh, of the obturator membrane and adjacent bone as you can see this is the obturator foramen this hole opening and picture on the left side this is the obturator membrane so it originates from the external surface definitely this is the outside this is the external surface from inside will be the internal surface of the obturator membrane so it originates from the external surface of the obturator membrane and adjacent bone adjacent bone is this is i already told you this one is the uh, uh, origin point of the obturator externus muscle so adjacent bone is this part and then obturator membrane obturator membrane picture on this side and adjacent part is the this region of the stupebigramus so this is the origin of the obturator externus muscle here you can see that this is the obturator externus muscle because it is arising from the external surface of the obturator membrane and one muscle which will arise from inside like this is the posterior view picture above and this is the muscle which will arise from here and leave the pelvis from here this is that will be the uh, internal uh, uh, obturator internus and this is arising from the external surface and leaving from outside this is the obturator externus so these highlighted in green and red are the obturator externus muscle obturator externus innervated by the uh, uh, insertion is on the trochanteric fossa now this is point to understand see this is the trochanteric fossa let me change highlighter yes this is the trochanteric fossa this is the greater trochanter this is the lesser trochanter this is the uh, trochanter intertrochanteric crest this is the posterior aspect of the femur or upper end now you can see this is more superior part this is the trochanteric fossa here in picture on this side this is the superior part trochanteric fossa and action of this muscle is very important to understand its uh, insertion as well as origin so origin is from here and it's going all the way till here now if this muscle gets shortens now what will happen it will not adduct the thigh it will not bring the thigh close it will pull the th thigh from this way so if you pull the thigh like this it will go outward so it will abduct the thigh so this is the one muscle which will which was i was talking about before i said we will discuss later that is the uh, abductor of thigh so this muscle is the abductor of thigh if you uh, something is attached over here suppose and you can pull it like this so this uh, leg will go outside so it will produce uh, abduction not adduction now innervation obturator nerve posterior division then obturator externus action now it uh, externally rotates 
femur now external rotation of the femur picture below you can see this is the external rotation of the femur where the hip is extended okay now here the, uh, the picture above this is also external rotation which is a normal position when we cross the leg or when we are sitting like in is, is such a posture so this is the external rotation of the femur so it uh, causes the ext uh, external rotates the femur plus when hip is flexed it abducts thigh you can see picture this above um, uh, in black color you can see this is the abduction of the thigh when knees are flexed so this is the abductor of thigh how it is causing abduction of the thigh because it pull the uh, femur from superior aspect so the, the leg is uh, uh, leg will go away from the body not towards the body let me show you in this now you can see this is the uh, obturator externus muscle this is the trochanteric fossa insertion point head of the femur and this is the origin point which is the now if this muscle will get shortened or it will get like a contract it will pull the leg from up, uh, upper superior side or the femur from the superior side now you can see if this pull superiorly the leg will go outward can you see and it relax the leg will come back definitely this is not the only adductor of the thigh abductor of the thigh but along with the other muscles it pulls the leg in this way so this is how this is the abductor of the thigh otherwise we will think it will get short and it will bring the leg towards the body now you can see this is the leg is flexed now this is laterally rotating the thigh you can see this is relax muscle this is contraction and this laterally rotate the thigh so action of the adductor uh, uh, obturator externus are the abduction and lateral rotation of the thigh quiz which one of the following muscle form the proximal posterior wall of the adductor canal i was repeating again and again now i will not tell you you just have to assess yourself so which one of the following muscle forms the proximal posterior wall of the adductor canal is the gracilis adductor longus adductor magnus or pectineus now you have to answer yourself and assess yourself quiz muscle which muscle forms the part of the floor of the medial half of the femoral triangle which muscle form the uh part of the floor of the medial half of the femoral triangle now there are uh, medial half it's more medial uh, and slightly lateral so there as uh, there are two muscles so you have to uh, tick if there is a one muscle present or both muscle are present so options are adductor brevis adductor magnus pectineus or obturator externus muscle then identify muscle and what is origin innovation and action of the identified muscle now which one is this muscle and what is the origin of this muscle and what is the uh, innovation and action of this muscle now let's summarize the lecture this is the summary on the of the muscles on origin and insertion point of view you can just take a screenshot and memorize it on yourself now this chart above which shows the anterior medial and posterior uh, hamstrings or adductor or quadriceps this is the summary for the action as the medial compartment is the adductor compartment so mainly action is adduction of the thigh or at a hip joint and uh, for the nerves this mnemonic is important for all compartments map of sciatic m for medial a for anterior p for posterior so medial compartment anterior compartment and posterior compartment o f of of is the obturator f for femoral nerve s for sciatic so m map medial is uh, innervated by the obturator and then we have a then a is anterior comp uh, compartment which is uh, innervated by the femoral nerve and then we have p 